After many rumours and much speculation, the new SRAM Force group set is here, and we've had a chance to ride it ahead of its launch. Stay tuned for my initial impressions, and first up, let's see what's new with SRAM's second tier group set. Now, eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed that the ETAP bit of the name has been ditched, but fear not, this is still an electronic and wireless group set and is still available in 1x and 2x configurations. Arguably, the biggest change is up top with the shifters. These might look familiar to some of you, and that's because it's a very similar shape to what has been used on the rival group set, SRAM's lower tier group set unlike on the rival that these have carbon levers and these uh, shifter buttons have also grown in size compared to the previous force group set and now have more texture. The chain rings and power meter are now an integrated affair just like we saw on the red group set. More on that in a minute. Gone is the bland grey, that's not its official name, and in its place is this unicorn grey. That is its official name. On the rear mechs, the cranks and the shifters we also have laser foil. It's not a change but it is also worth pointing out that it also costs the same as the old force. Now if you've watched my latest bike prices versus inflation then you'll know that's a very rare thing. And that leads us on to why SRAM has actually made the changes that it has. On the whole SRAM said that they were very happy with the shifting performance of the 12-speed group set but not many people were buying it to put on dream builds were they because well it just looked a bit bland. And if you're like me, then Rival offered nearly all the same performance for a fraction of the price. And that's why I use it on my gravel bike. You can check out that using the link up there. Some people might say that SRAM have played it safe with what are really only minor updates to a group set that was released three years ago. But let's be honest, the old version was a stonkingly good group set. And in fact, we gave the wide version a nine out of 10 over on the Road CC website. What updates have been made, in my opinion, only add to the group set's appeal. Aesthetics is very subjective, but I'm yet to find someone who prefers the look of the old one. See if you can be the first down in the comments section below. The increased blackness and oil slick graphics I think look premium enough for a dream build without being so bling that they detract or clash with some frames. Then there's the shifters. I've been using the Rival AXS since it was released and it's a good shape that is one that I find really works for me. Better than the old bulky style found on the red and old force. Again, I think that it looks better. Some will argue that off-road on gravel, for example, the old tool hoods stop your hands jumping forwards but to be honest, if your hands are doing that, then you either need to be on a mountain bike, in the drops, or just holding on a bit tighter. They gave me thumb blisters anyway, so uh, not something that I ever got on with overly well. But how can SRAM just magic away half the hood? Well, removing the pad contact point adjust freed up a fair bit of space up here. And as you might expect, as a cycling journalist, this is something that I personally did use, but I do completely agree with SRAM that the average consumer didn't touch it. It's something that I'm not gonna lose sleep over anyway. The brakes offer superb modulation and predictable power, and the redesigned shifter is, in my opinion, well worth it. Riders with smaller hands will likely prefer the redesigned shifters even more than I do. It's much easier to wrap your hands around the shifter body, which helps you feel as secure as possible. That's gonna be particularly useful on the one by version, which is more likely to be used off-road. You may have also noticed that I've got these little buttons under the bar. They're wireless climbing blips, but you could just as easily attach them to the drops and use them as sprint shifters. The old red group set used wired blips, so it's nice to see SRAM ditching even more wires than before. So we'll glance over the calipers because nothing has changed there, and the same with the discs really. The calipers do use the bleeding edge technology. I mention this because it's something that the rival calipers are still missing. For those of you who don't know, bleeding edge is a superb method of bleeding your brakes, aka getting all the air out of the system, but it does require a special kit. Moving down to the back of the bike, and we haven't looked much at this rear mech yet, and that's also quite similar to the outgoing force, if you ignore the new flashy graphics at least. SRAM has taken the launch as an opportunity to streamline its naming and range, so there's now just two rear mechs. This one, which is suitable for the 1028, 1030, 1033, and 1036 tooth cassettes that SRAM offers, whilst the force Explore AXS rear derailleur is one by specific and works with 1036 tooth cassettes and 1044 tooth cassettes. Basically, use this one if you're on a road bike and it'll offer you more than enough gears and for most riding and stick the Explore version on your gravel slash touring bike for even more range. 
If, however, you're after even more gear range than that, then SRAM still allow a mullet setup, which is where you can pair the shifters to one of their Eagle mountain bike mechs. The rear mech is also one of the areas that is slightly different to rival. Whereas the rival rear mech uses like a spring clutch system, the force and red rear mech for that matter, they uh, use an orbit fluid damper system to keep the chain under control. Just like on the old force, I found this has worked well over however many potholes I've chucked it through, which is more than can be said for this seat post clamp. I keep on ending up a bit lower. The real test for this though will be off-road and we'll have to do some proper testing for that once we get a one by system. Hopefully that'll happen pretty soon. The cassettes themselves haven't changed, not since SRAM scrapped trying to paint them black anyway, but stay tuned until the end to see what got launched alongside the fork group set. I'm quite excited about it. The batteries are also still exactly the same. SRAM claims to have improved battery life a little bit via firmware updates, and you can now charge them four at a time using the new charging dock. That will set you back 130 pounds, but it certainly will reduce clutter for multi-bike households and workshops. Moving forwards, the front mech is also still available in two varieties. This one is obviously designed for road. The body remains an extremely similar shape, but the cage has not only been painted, but also refined. And then there's also a wide version, which sits further out from the bike than this one to offer greater tire clearance and is optimized for smaller chairings, say 43, 30. Front shifting is something that SRAM has said it's worked tirelessly on improving when compared to the outgoing version. I have to say it is impressive. You can change front ring under some serious load. Not that you should, but it's nice to know that if the time ever does arise, then it will do it. Helping that crisp shifting is these direct mount chain rings with the option of an integrated power meter. Now this is one of the upgrades that I'm less keen about. It's an expensive replacement when these wear out. And whereas I tend to be a cheapskate and just replace the large chain ring on my setup, you're forced to buy both rings and potentially a power meter as well with this. SRAM says that these are designed to be extremely hard wearing, but there is a limit to how durable they can be when weight needs to be kept down. In my experience with a cleanish drivetrain and fresh chains when required, you're looking at a replacement rings about every 24,000 K or so, which equates to over two years for most amateur riders. Even so, I'd suggest that if you do choose to buy direct mount chain rings and a power meter, then you seriously keep on top of your drivetrain cleaning to drastically improve their lifespan. Front gearing remains the same, 5037, 4835 and 4633 ring combinations for the direct mounts. That's more than enough gears for just about every road rider. And if you haven't tried SRAM's X range gearing yet, then I urge you to do so before chatting crap about it in the comment section. This 4835 combo offers the same largest gear as a 5311, but with far more opportunity to spin as the road starts going uphill. Many a naysayer will argue that smaller cogs are less efficient, and yes, they'd be right. However, with this X range, you can stay in the big ring for longer, especially on rolling terrain like we've got around Bath. That also means that more often than not, my chain line has improved, and well, that should benefit drivetrain durability. There is also a two by wide spindle version that's available with 43 30 tooth rings, which are non-integrated. And then for one by, there's a, there's a whole host of rings with everything from 36 tooth to 50 tooth aero rings. And they do look pretty cool. I saw one with a classified system, bang tidy. The one by group set, not this one, copies rival with its quark spindle based power meter option. I've been very satisfied with mine on the rival and it's really cost effective way of adding power measuring capabilities to your pride and joy. And it only adds around 40 grams, albeit sacrificing a little accuracy. The rival one has an accuracy of about plus or minus 3%, whereas the direct mount one like this claims to have plus or minus 1.5%. Not bad, big fan of quark. So what have we missed? Well, the flat top chain stays the same, but I guess I can now tell you about all the other cool stuff that SRAM has released alongside this group set. So it's unveiled an oil slick flat top chain and cassette that were previously only available to world champions. Not many of us are world champions, so it's quite nice that we can now get our hands on them. These are part of the red lineup, but don't expect them to come cheap. The 1028 or 1033 cassettes will set you back a whopping 358 pounds and any gravel riders will just have to wait a bit longer for our oil slick fill sram now makes the road version and the mountain bike version feels like gravel cyclists been neglected a bit 
So on the whole, my initial impressions of the new SRAM Force are very positive. It shifts at the rear just as crisp and quickly as the outgoing version. It offers excellent gearing choices for a whole host of riders. The front shifting is improved, albeit only marginally, and in some cases at the additional expense to the consumer. And it, well, the whole thing looks better. The shifter shape is brilliant out on the road and likely even better off-road for those with smaller hands. I, for one, am glad that SRAM has put the hoods on a diet. The only issue that I can see at least is that whereas before Rival was too good to need to buy Force, Force is now too good to buy Red. Luckily, if the rumours are true, then Red will likely get updated this coming summer. June, if previous SRAM releases are anything to go by, but they wouldn't tell us, so we'll just have to keep on dishing out the spy shots. As always, if you enjoyed this content, then please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below letting us know your thoughts on the new group set. Uh, did SRAM include everything that you wanted to see? We'll see you next time.